All right, Ultimate Hoops Nation. I'm Aaron Wormset to Sonny Young Graves, just the good and bad and the ugly. Coming to you live from showcase number one of the Dream League. We're here at the Target Center. Uh, you're a GM. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on the guys that came down tonight? Today. Um, I know first one's always the rough one. So early morning Saturday, nobody probably wanted to get out of bed, but it was a good it was a good effort. A lot of hustle. A lot of scrappy play. People want to make teams. So I, I definitely see the effort. Um, didn't see the bigger name, like open players yet. But I'm pretty sure they'll be at the next one. They always feel like they're, they're good enough to skip one. So we'll see how hard they go at the next showcase. That was actually a good mix. There was guys that you, I didn't know. I know there's you know a few guys from the, that play in the athletic clubs league. And so it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. Your job will be tough. The salary caps and the balance of teams would definitely be, definitely be different. Uh, let, let, let's get into it. Um, the good. Um, Supersonics are, are still flying under the radar. They beat UNO. I think. I mean, they were they were up by uh, ten to fifteen at one point. And they they almost gave it away, but they they won. I think they won by eight. Uh, I think they're five and one now. Um, it's funny because when Izzy and Reed were talking about doing this week in rack, they were going to talk about the playoffs and, you know, playoff teams or whatever. And we went through who, you know, was the Bloomington South teams, and then we went through who was Fridley. And this is before the Supersonics played UE and O, and I was like, oh, the Supersonics are 4-1, and one, the Blazers are 4-1, and one, you know. And he just, just shook his head at the Supersonics like, no. But uh, they, they keep – Keep surprising. Uh, they play UNO, a tough team. They were, they were. I think they had the full squad there. Um, John Price is back. He was out for a, a while with his his ankle injury. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on that team, and how how deep can they go? Um, it's basically a homebred team, friendly pickup, play together a lot. Um, they know each other's tendencies, so that definitely helps with the chemistry fact. And they just play hard. I mean. It's going to be tough when they match up with some Bloomington South teams when they have the actual size and that play together. Like if they run into the Rebels, that's a completely different story. Even the Blue Chips, the chemistry there. And Blue Chips are 0-5, but you put them up against Briggs, Mayer, Arsenio's the, the guard. J. Mike terrorizes Hoyle every time. So it's, it's all matchups, and the friendly matchups are working for them. Uh, so Josh Hoyle, another guy that kind of flies under the radar, um, but you could say he's the MVP on this team, right? He's definitely the glue for the team. Wow. So if the Supersonics finish the season six and two, seven and one, is he MVP candidate? Uh, I would. I'll put him in there. It'll be, it'll be a difference. I mean, we need different MVP candidates. That's definitely, I mean, you take that team, although it's, I would say it's more team play because anytime Corey go off with six threes, Jordan's definitely the probably the most athletic player on that team. Joe plays good D. Plays good D. I mean, it's definitely a team effort. So, I mean, considering him MVP of the league is kind of tough, but he's definitely going to be a good factor off of that team. Uh, the – the, the Shockers continue their streak. Um, Shockers beat the Crusaders with Tuan. Um, the, 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 the Shockers have now beat the Gorillas. They beat the Gorillas pretty well, pretty handily uh, two weeks ago, and then they beat the Crusaders. Um, and I don't think Zao's played the last. I think Zao's done for the season, right, if I heard right? I haven't heard that. So, uh but it's definitely a different factor. You lose your your guard, your threat that basically causes teams to face guard him anywhere inside 35 feet. So it's, it's definitely tough, and that makes that puts the load on Jake, makes the load on Jake a lot heavier. So especially without that consistent knockdown shooter that you can kick to. Even if Zao's having a bad game, you're not going to leave him open. So definitely makes it rough for the rest of the team, but they're bouncing back and winning big games. Is uh is this I know roster wise they're not much different, but is this year's Shockers team different from last year's Shocker team in your eyes? Um I would I would say 
I would just say they're they're learning each other more. So it's definitely a little bit better. Um, last year's games were, or, or last season's games were a little bit loose, just winning at the last last minute. But now they're getting that chemistry. They know where they need to go and who to look at. So now it's it's better for them, even if their record's not showing it. So uh, Uncle Drew's kids, Bloomington South, they handled the blue chips. Uh, but but Emmanuel Harrison had one hell of a game. Um, he sh he shot eight for ten from deep and eleven fifteen from uh, the field. Uh, some people have called them too big, uh, but they do have a good mix of players. Um, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on that team? Well, J.R. Smith definitely made an appearance at Bloomington South <laughs> on Wednesday. Um, I, I don't think I've seen E like that focused in the game, but I mean, the size on that team is, is huge. And the only problem, like, I could see that team having a problem if we were back a few years ago and you had the club and Fridley where they're all small and, and, and just run and hustle. That's that's a team that would be like like the Supersonics. That that could be a surprise with just having Joe there and you take him, put him on that one big, and you're all small. So that takes away the ball handling for uh, most mismatch both ways. But when you have just that one ball handler where they got gorillas with one ball handler, uh, shockers, blue chips with Arsenio, who's a bigger ball handler, it's like the size works in their favor. Uh, another team that's probably uh, it's, it's on the bigger end uh, this season, lights out. Uh, they they won a few games at the start of the season, then had a, a slump, and uh, you know last week Tuan and Kelvin were going at it, and uh, but they beat the Blazers this this week. Um, it'd be funny to see Izzy's face after the Blazers lost and Supersonics <laughs> won, but um, still he'll still have the Blazers in the top eight over Supersonics. Well, uh, which uh, which version of Lights Out will we see the rest of the season? The, they can't stay consistent. I, I can't say that they're going to stay focused. Or I mean, it's given that, I mean, Tuan wants to be the player coach, and it's too many different personalities. Like you got D'Angelo who's played, Todd, um, Josh Hansen, and then you got Calvin as your guard who likes to hold the ball along. Yeah, he's the one that wants to control the ball, and Tuan doesn't like that. <laughs> And, then our, and Dwayne counts? Dwayne counts, yeah. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they, they finish. They're going to clash probably, I would say, one the next serious game they have, they're going to clash. But as long as they have that game where it's kind of a toss-up or they, they send their favor, they'll, they'll be cohesive. Uh, on to the bad. Um, we kind of touched on it earlier. Uh, but the blue chips – um, had Briggs play 34 minutes. Did they have only five players or six? No, players? I think they had. I think they had more. I think Briggs is, you know, like, screw it, let's get my playing time in. Um, is he playing I mean, on? I don't think I've ever seen him play he, 44 minutes. Is he? No, he's had. Well, when he was with the Avengers, he had to play <laughs> 44. But like with subs there, he's willingly playing 34 minutes. Something's going on, and apparently this on, he's not liking this on five start. And if he's saying I got to play 34 minutes to make a change, something's definitely wrong with how the chemistry's going or something. I don't know. Uh, also in Bloomington South, the Spurs, um, who. They don't play a lick of defense. I, don't, I looked at the stats, and I think they're leading the league in points allowed by like 17 or 20. So there's a huge gap. Uh, I think there were. I think it was like 89 points per game they were allowing, and that was. I think they played a little bit better defense this week, but um, but they only lost by six to Miller Time, which is a fairly good team. Um, will they will they get a win before the end of the season? It's tough. Squids aren't out there, so so they definitely have to battle for for the for this win. I mean, Spurs are a prime example of live by the three, die by the three. There's nobody on that team that consistently will drive to the basket. Everybody's putting it putting it up, and like with last week with Big Smash, they hung they hung in the game all game because they were shooting sixty percent. 
But then as soon as they miss a few, the other team goes on the run. They're not playing any defense. No, no team and, defense at least. And they just don't – they don't seem to have – the team chemistry yet because he got he got Chuck to can he, he he shot well this week, um, and and Chris Lehman who can light it up, but they don't have to just I don't know they, they don't talk on defense they I mean it's all I got him and I'm gonna lock my man down but as soon as you get burnt transition yeah transition D's horrible and then they don't help they don't switch they don't call out picks it's it's tough to go. All right, I mean, it's the reason why Mike D'Antoni and the Phoenix Suns split up. Like, you can't just go shot for shot and hope that I'll shoot better than you that day. Uh, the Bulls, after starting out 2-0, and under the name Team Lifetime, I think, before the switch, um, they're now 2-4. and They're on a four-game skid. Um, another team that just does not look – not does not look in sync. Um they added – I don't know whose cousin – I think he's – I don't know who's – they added somebody's cousin, uh, Corey, uh, a bigger guy. Doesn't look bad. It's hyphenated. But, um, yeah, they, they, add, they add him. He doesn't look bad. He shows up this week. Um, they got down. They started playing Bulls defense and looked pretty good. They got in – I actually think they got the lead. Um, and then they ended up, they ended up blowing it. And that's kind of like the last, you know, how the last four games have went. Um, will, will they get it together? Uh, Bulls normally do. And, but it's, it's, it's a rough season for Gino right now. He tried to do the surprise attack and then uh, I guess it worked for the first two weeks and he was like, all right, let's throw it. Let's let's go ahead and throw let's throw the franchise name back on there. It's gonna be a good season, and then it's just rough. But I mean, I know it's a couple of games I walked in there, Iron Five, and it's just getting his players to show up so they can play the hard pressure defense that he wants to play and hustle. But uh, on to the ugly, uh, the Magic Johnsons, uh, who you play with. Um, you guys played Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret only had – they had Iron 5. They were Iron 5 the whole game. <laughs> you guys – I think you guys were down – torn. I don't know. You're down by double digits at halftime. You guys only scored 16 points, I believe, in in the first half, and it was ugly. Um, at, at the end of the game, in overtime, uh, you guys are up by three, and uh, Blair, Blair Johnson uh, – who did he fall? He oh he fouled Mark, Mark Luer. He falls. He falls. You guys are you guys are up by three. There's like one point something seconds left on, and you follow Mark Luer in the corner. Uh, thank God he missed the first free throw. <laughs> but free throw to, first free throw in the one on one game tying. What that's the hardest free throw to make because once you see it go in, the confidence builds. It's just that first one is like hands feel cold, and it didn't help that Mark maybe took four shots the entire game yeah. out of what 44 47 minutes he's taking four shots and then you want him to come down and knock knock down three clutch free throws it was tough and i mean we're up three at that point if it's a turnaround fadeaway there's no there's no reason to file like we shouldn't we should if they're gonna file we're gonna file on the inbound catch file and put them at the line otherwise that's a risk like even with the Hail Mary shot he put up, if it goes in, it's a tie game. Now, it's the right call. It's the right call. You don't – I mean, you look at the refs, every situation. You put them in a situation where basically they don't, they're don't. they not choosing who's going to win the game because they're giving them a shot to tie the game. So it's there's, there's nothing there. You fouled, you fouled. That's your fault. Um, but, I mean, for offensive, offensively, we struggled. Because we won the tip, and I hit a three in within the first seven seconds. And then we had a total of seven points for the first 12 minutes of the game. So we scored four minute, four points in 11 minutes. <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. It wasn't pretty. Uh, so were you guys playing down to their level, or were they playing up? We just couldn't – we couldn't find the middle of the basket. <laughs> I mean, we're turning the ball over. 
They were hit. Uh, they were hit. <laughs> ben hit. Chris was, three for three for yeah. in the first half. I mean, I know Chris to be that that team guy, pass the ball, set hard screens, get rebounds, and he comes out and makes a mid range, a mid range, and then three NBA range threes. And at that point, it's like, okay, yeah, we just see how the ball's bouncing this way. We have to play hard and play as a team. That's one thing that Magic Johnson, we got to figure out how to move the ball and still get everybody their shots. I mean, that's the only thing. We have key players with Ethan and Abdi, but it's like coming down one-on-one. -on -one, we have to get everybody a touch because you never know when it comes down to where they have that open shot that we need them to take. They're going to pass it up because they haven't taken one all game. But just keep moving it around. Everybody's going to get open. Everybody's a threat on the team. And let's make it happen. Uh, and we kind of touched on it earlier, but the blue chips, after going to the Final Four, um, are, are 0 5 this season. Um, can't really call it a championship hangover because they didn't make it. So I don't know. It's, uh, they're looking like Duke when Steph Curry <laughs> put them put him out with the Davidson. I don't know. Uh, will Will they get a win? Who are their last three? Uh, do, don't they play the Spurs? They, play the Spurs. they have. A, they've a, got a chance. A game to watch <laughs> and and the Crusaders, right? Because they both took a week off. So blue chips looking to finish uh, two and six. I'll give them two and six. I feel like I feel like they're still down on themselves, so they may take themselves out of one more game, but they'll finish two and six and be a they'll be a tough sixteen to twenty four seed. That's gonna be a tough matchup. Uh any final thoughts before you go? Um good showing at the showcase. It was a good week for UH. Um Big Smash is what, two and one without Twan. Um, Crusaders are two and one with with Twan. I mean, it looks like it's a good trade. Uh, we'll see how this week unfolds. Gets deeper into that uh, playoff run. Yeah, and the the playoff schedule is posted online. Um, we'll we'll see you guys next week. Oh, last week, so uh, this week's Thursday. I got to be in Fridley interview for Junius last time before you take off. Yep. Let's go, I guess. I had to hear it all we'll day to, Wednesday. We'll just follow him with a camera. <laughs> See you guys next week.